To service the input shaft assembly, we'll first need to remove it. Begin by removing the four fasteners on the top of the nozzle. Now, grasp the input shaft and rock it gently back and forth. The input shaft assembly will separate from the rest of the nozzle. To gain access to the high pressure seal, we need to first remove the support ring. It's held in place by a retainer ring. To remove it, we'll place a pick under the end of the retainer ring and work the pick in a clockwise motion until the ring comes out of its groove. Use the supplied bolt and screw it into the support ring. Now you can pull the bolt and the support ring out of the hub. The high pressure seal can now be removed. This high pressure seal and support ring are exactly the same as the ones used in the output shaft assembly. When installing a new high pressure seal, it's recommended that you also replace the O-ring located on the support ring. If you're simply installing a new high pressure seal, place it into the bore with its best ID edge up towards the support ring. Now screw the bolt back onto the support ring. Apply a small amount of lubrication to the O-ring and push the support ring back into the hub. To reinstall the spiral retainer ring, place the supplied tool into the bore and place the ring into the tool. Use the plunger and work the outer edges of the ring downward until the ring is about three quarters of the way down the bore. Now simply push it the rest of the way out. Use a small screwdriver to ensure that the ring is completely installed into its groove. To remove the inlet shaft from the input housing, first remove the collar and then loosen the gland and slide it off the shaft. The shaft and gear assembly can now be slid out of the housing. You can now see the thrust bearing and its race which is inside the input shaft housing. There's also an oil seal with the radial bearing inside of it. This grease zerk communicates grease to the thrust bearing. And this grease zerk communicates grease to this hole, which feeds grease to the gear reduction assembly. To remove the oil seal and radial bearing from the input shaft housing, you can simply push on them from this side of the housing. To remove the inlet shaft, begin by removing the thrust bearing. Then place the assembly into a holder. Remove this bearing from the shaft. And then the O-ring, which preloads the inner race of the bearing. There's a retaining ring here that holds the beveled gear onto the shaft. We'll remove it by using a pick and getting it started underneath one end. Move the pick in a clockwise direction until the ring comes completely out of its groove. The beveled gear can now be removed. You can see that there's a bearing located here that inserts into the back side of the beveled gear. There's also a thrust bearing on the opposite side which sits against this shoulder located in the hub. This bearing not only eliminates friction on the beveled gear, but it also serves to set the correct gear lash between this gear and the one on the output shaft. The wave spring on the back side of the beveled gear serves to keep the beveled gear the correct distance from the hub. With the beveled gear assembly removed, we can now remove the entire gear reduction assembly off of the input shaft. The shaft itself is now free of the assembly and could be replaced if needed. If that is the case, Remove the thrust bearing race and install it onto the new shaft. The end of the shaft has a special coating which extends the life of the shaft. 
When reinstalling the shaft, make sure its dowel pins engage into the holes in the gear reduction assembly. It's important that the input shaft be installed on the correct end of the gear reduction assembly. You can locate the A mark that's on the housing and make sure that the shaft is installed in the correct orientation. We now can install the bevel gear back onto the gear reduction and shaft assembly. Make sure the thrust bearings are installed. You can now turn the gear to ensure that the input shaft rotates slower than the gear. Place the shaft and gear reduction assembly back into a holder. Install the spiral retaining ring back into its groove by extending one end and placing it into the groove. Then, walk it around in a counterclockwise motion. Make sure that the retainer ring is completely into the groove. And then, install the O-ring, and then the bearing, which supports this end of the shaft. Remove the assembly from the holder and place the thrust bearing on the opposite side. A small amount of grease can be used to hold it in place. We can now place this entire assembly back into the housing. When doing so, it is important that we line up these dowel pins with the holes in the body. One way to do this is to align the grease transmission hole in the gear reduction assembly with the grease zerk in the body. Now, grasp the input shaft and pull it in, rotating it slightly from left to right until you feel the pin slide into the holes. This assembly can now be reinstalled onto the hub. Line up the holes in the input shaft assembly with the holes in the hub, and then reinstall the fasteners. Tighten the fasteners in an alternating pattern until they are all snug, and then torque them to 15 foot bounds. And finally, reinstall the gland and collar.